that's also a testament to this place, you know, to Pixar and to everybody who works here. Like there's, there's a, a level of quality in everybody's job and everything they do that we are striving for. And that's it. We, we know what it means to make Pixar quality work. We know what it means when someone sees that lamp hopping across the stream and what they expect. And we want to not only meet, but exceed our audience's expectations every single time. That's our goal. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Movie Podcast. My name is Daniel. I'm one of your hosts today and joining alongside me. They say life is a highway and Anthony's right there beside me on that highway. Hello, Anthony. How are you? Vroom, vroom. Kaboom. I'm doing well. Yeah, oh, okay. Was that... <laughs> so if you... I just want to confirm. Would that be your catchphrase if you were in the Cars universe? Like Lightning McQueen has kachow. You'd say vroom, vroom, kaboom? Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. I like it. So I, I would like say it, it in a you know, different like style of voice. But yeah, I think that would be my, yeah. my like catchphrase. How do you think you would say it then? No, like I, just so I can't. I need to know though now. I, I need to know. I don't even know my voice yet. I don't even know. I need like a, everyone. Every car has Daniel, their own. I need to get into character yeah, first. I know, like I'm, I have to be in a car. I have to be a yeah. car. And right now, I'm, right. I was just halfway. You're in the Anthony car. right now. Yeah, I'm just yeah, Anthony. You're just Anthony. You're Anthony. just Anthony right now. So Anthony, what car would you be in the Cars universe if you had to choose? I would be an exotic race car. I think that would be. I like it. My, because I'm exotic, right? Like I got the blonde hair, so it's exotic. Yeah, yeah. But from my background's <laughs> Italian, so I had like the yeah, yeah. The, you know the the Formula Your European One European import car. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not an import car like you know a BMW. I'm like the higher echelon of cars. You know Ferrari, Lambo. Yeah, of course the Italian Alfa cars. Romeo. I would love to be an Alfa Romeo. Like any okay. petrol head out there knows Alfa Romeos are the car of choice for any serious driver i like it yeah. you know i would love to i'd love to be up there in that echelon with you i don't know if i could be an alfa romeo but you know i would love to be some type of fast car you know whatever the car of portugal is you know maybe it's just like a maybe it's just like a golf cart that goes around the islands there you're Who knows? Maybe, like a maybe i'm a boat a nissan gtr you're a nissan gtr i'll be a nissan G okay cool or you know i you know i love like the nissan skylines growing up because of like too fast too furious which, so maybe which is maybe i'll like be them the GTR is down. That that's the like yeah. the, the bigger brother will say. You know, Shay Shay's typically the driver, like our driver True. when we go places. We all drive, but Shay, you know, Shay likes to be behind the wheel, and he has an electric car, so you know it helps. You know, not spend money for us on gas. But uh, you know, what would Shay be? What do you think? I would Shay say would be? like because he's driving a lot of people everywhere they go. He either he's like yeah, a yeah. taxi cab or a minivan. Right. Okay. You know, let's go with minivan. Let's, let's go with minivan. minivan. I like that. Good. You know, he has a lot of people in his car all the time and uh right. He loves driving people around. I don't know if there he actually go. does. Like we just assume he does. He's <laughs> like, guys, please, somebody start somebody start driving. There was I'm so one tired. Day, remember that one day he's like, Would someone else like to drive? And we're like, no. <laughs> no, that's cool, Shay. That's cool. I remember like there's there's been a couple of times too where Shay's had to like go on a phone call and he's like, Hey Daniel, can you drive my car? And I'm like uh, okay and you know and yeah, then like we, we get there and yeah <laughs> it is exactly like ferris bueller you know today is a special edition of the movie podcast let us tell you why because today on the show we have larry the cable guy aka daniel lawrence whitney who you know as the voice of mater uh we have cars on the road coming out on disney plus on september 8th and i want to say thank you to our friends at disney studios canada for you know for making this happen for us but not only do we have larry the cable guy we have a bunch of directors and a producer from pixar joining us this is a huge this is probably the most special guest we've ever had on an episode of the movie podcast and you know when we were talking to you know, the, you know, when we were talking to Steve, Brian, Bobby, and Mark at the end, it was like six of us in a Zoom room together. So it was a little daunting. And that's what I was thinking. Damn, I wish Shay had a minivan right now and we could be doing this interview driving down the road together. I thought that that, that was a missed opportunity on our part. Definitely you know? was. Um, yeah, like getting like that, 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 that was the most we've ever had on a show, including us. That was six people. Yeah. You know what happens when there's a large group? There's a lot of talking, which is yes, great for our audience because you're going to learn a lot about this show. 
Yeah, you definitely are. And like I said, Cars on the Road is going to be out on September 8th on Disney+. Plus. That's also Disney Plus Day. So there's going to be a lot of stuff happening next week, and it's going to be leading into D23. It's a crazy busy time here at the Movie Podcast. You know, we just dropped our Rings of Power interview series. We have a review out for that as well, too. Um, we have our Last of Us Part 1 on PS5 review, which you could go check out as well. Um, and then we're rolling right into TIFF, and we'll have some reviews and some more interviews coming out this week on the Movie Podcast. So there's lots to look forward to so please make sure you're subscribed to the movie podcast and all podcast feeds on youtube uh follow us on instagram twitter tiktok and letterbox at the movie podcast and of course you could follow us on discord and you could be part of the show that way keep the conversation going you know offline let's 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 keep going we have some great spoiler rooms going on there so we can make that happen as well um but today today on the show you know we're so lucky to have larry the cable guy uh, aka daniel lawrence whitney join us he is such a kind person i don't think we ever guests that we'd have Larry the Cable Guy joining us on the movie podcast. But it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. And I think we had a great time with him. Uh, and of course, you know, we have director Steve Purcell, Brian Fee, Robbie Podista, and producer Mark Sondheimer of Pixar's Cars joining us. So it is a fully stacked room today of people. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to to getting right into it. Anything that you that, you know, it's been a busy time, like I said, Anthony, I'm just curious for yourself. Is there anything that we've released recently that you're most proud of? Well, I think for, for me, it's, it's the Lord of the Rings special that we did with all the interviews and our reviews. I think that's something that was a, a huge undertaking for us, planning and getting that all managed and organized. I know a lot of people are like, oh, but it's a podcast yeah. or, you know, like a lot of that video editing is not done by anyone else. It's, it's, I, I'm there editing video and Daniel's adjusting audio. Um, behind the scenes, not audio is all, always the greatest. So we have to like make sure it sounds great and we have to figure out yeah. technologies that we can use to like boost it up. Um, but yeah, like that's, that was a, one of our biggest, um, events that we've taken, you know, as the movie podcast. And now we're getting into yeah, definitely. film festival being, you know, right, right after it. And who knows what's going to come, you know, we got D23 come in, we, we we don't know what to expect, but, you know, we're always here to uh, create amazing stuff for our, our audience members. So, yeah. And, you know, and that's the thing, you know, I just remember us, those, you know, as soon as we got our Lord of the Rings footage, we were just like, okay, like, let's, let's make this work. Let's fix yeah. this audio. Let's fi let's get this, this video edited. So I, I can't thank you enough for, you know, handling, you know, the video side of everything and aligning all the audio that I was working on. And then, you know, Shay's building stories and doing all that stuff too. So it's just been, uh, it's all hands on deck right now in the movie podcast, but we love doing this. And, you know, and I think cars as well, like cars on the road is such a fun show. You're going to see it later this week on Disney plus, uh, you know, so without further ado, please welcome Larry, the cable guy to the movie podcast. Then we're going to jump right into a conversation with directors, T Purcell, Brian fee, Bobby Padista, and then Mark si uh, Sondheimer, who's a producer of the show. Uh, so stay tuned. We got a nice 20 minute block coming your way of interviews and we're going to kind of wrap it all up at the end. So, Let's get right to it. Hey, what's up, Daniel? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, Larry? I'm here with Anthony as well. Hello, Larry. What's up, Anthony? <laughs> We've heard so much about Anthony, a little bit about Daniel, but Anthony, we know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today on the movie podcast. Larry, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're I'm doing good, man. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me on, man. This is a hilarious series, so thank you. Oh, it is. It's it's absolutely hilarious. We were just literally as we were joining the room, we were just talking about just some moments in the show that were were killing us. So thank you for your time. And uh, you know, Cars is such a huge uh, series and such a huge series for Pixar. You know, and it's great to have you on the road again. You know, and it's been a little while since we've seen Mater and Lightning, you know, tear up the roads together. So how excited were you to get the chance to, you know, go under the hood of the relationship and, you know, travel cross country together? Oh, it's all, you know what? It's always fun. I love working with Owen. Owen and I, now we're to the point where I know his inflections. He knows mine. If he adds something and they rewrite something uh, or they do vice versa with me, we know exactly where to go with it. Like when, when I'm in the studio and they're reading his lines to me. I totally know what uh, inflection Owen put on his voice and I know wh what to say to match him after. So it's a, you know, it's really good doing it this long and 
as much as we've had uh, time together doing it, it's man, it's just perfect. It's it's uh, working on all cylinders right now. It is, you know, and and that's so true. I think you guys have such a a wonderful chemistry with one another, like Lightning and Mater. And it's nice that you know you and Owen have that as well off screen, so you could just make the best you know portrayals as you can, right? Absolutely. What's well, almost like in real life. I mean, yeah. McQueen yeah. and Mater are completely different people, opposite people, opposite. Me, me and Owen are completely opposite, you know, but we have like the same relationship the cars the characters have, you know, where, where, where when we get together, we have a good time together. And, and, uh, he, uh, he does all of these things that I've never done. And I've done these things that he never has done. And we grew up differently and man, it's just, it's really cool. So we actually have a chance to, with our characters kind of infuse ourselves and all of this. And man, it's just, man, it's perfect. It's perfect. Owen's and, and Owen's great. I love Owen. I love that. Now, Larry, one of my favorite things I've learned about Mater in this series is his family background and where he came from. What has been your favorite part about playing Mater all these years? You know, just the fact that I get to uh, uh, put most, a lot of my personality into the character you know, Larry the Cable Guy has been my character forever. Uh, it started out on radio, and then all of a sudden it just evolved into the stage thing. But I'll be honest, I'm way more like Mater than I am Larry the Cable Guy. I mean, Larry the Cable Guy is fun, and I think he's hilarious uh, when I do it as a character. But I literally put my personality in Mater. So it's like my wife said, she loves Mater because it's me. She goes, I can see you in Mater way more than she sees it in the other one, you know? Um, so I think that's, that's really, really a, a fun thing about it. I get, I get to, I know it sounds weird. I know it's a character, but I get to be myself in the character, which is pretty yeah, I mean, awesome. That is really cool. You know, I, I don't think, I really ever thought of it that way. So that's, that's really cool to, you know, when you put it in perspective that way that you could bring, you know, these different personalities of yourself to this, you know, this character, you know, to, to shine that way. Right. Absolutely. You know, if I had to do all over again, it would have been uh, Dan Whitney as Mater. Uh, but, you know, at the time, my career was just blowing up and skyrocketing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted everything. My agency wanted everything under the umbrella of Larry, the cable guy, because that's right. kind of a brand. And people knew that. I mean, nobody would know who Mater was if it just came out. But Larry the Cable Guy at the time, oh, man, Larry's playing Mater. So right. I went with that. But as far as the character itself, that's a lot of Dan Whitney. I love that. I love that. And, and, you know, one of the things I love so much about this series, you know, that we're finally getting these cars to go on a road trip, which makes total sense for them. Um, you know, growing up for you, did you have a favorite road trip memory with your family or was there ever a place that you visited growing up that, you know, you had to, you know, go on this long road trip for? Oh my gosh. We used to go on these road trips and it was always fun because we'd stay at the Hojo's. Howard Johnson's. I don't even know what happened anymore. I had no <laughs> idea, but we couldn't wait to go to the Hojo's and they had a swimming pool and color TV and it was awesome. I mean, we're talking seventies here, boys. Um, uh, but then, uh, but now with my own kids, yeah, we always take road trips. We do it every summer and we love going out West. I love the West. It's so pretty. And so we start, we, we take four families. We all, uh, wow. caravan and we'll stop at, uh, uh, at, uh, rest, uh, not rest stops, but we'll stop at campgrounds mm -hmm. and, uh, We'll uh, camp out and we'll cook out and then we'll go see the sites the next day. Then we'll go on to the next place. So, I th so we've done, I think last year we went to Montana. Uh, we went to the uh, Yellowstone National Park. We went down to the Narrows, uh, went to see the giant redwoods. I mean, just a fun trip. It was like a fun nine, 10 day trip and just taking it easy and seeing the country and yeah, it's great. I, and also, of course, it's saying the theme before we even put out the movie, I had already gone down uh, Route 66. So pretty cool. I love that. And, it, you know, it's just great to be with your family as well. Right. Yeah. No, a follow no I'm not a big nah, My family's legit. But just for the fact, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now, follow question to your to the previous question. <laughs> if you had to choose anyone in the world to go on a road trip with, who would you choose other than your family? 
to go on a road trip with other than my family. Oh, probably my golfing buddies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then we could hit all the golf courses across the country. There you go. Yeah, I like to, I like the way you think. You know, obviously Mater is such an an iconic character in the world of cars. If you could voice any other vehicle in the cars universe, you know, what kind of vehicle would you want to voice? You mean a new vehicle? Yeah, like a new vehicle. Like so other if than a new, if, if a new one came around, well, you know what? Uh, I I grew up a country kid, and I grew up um, loading cattle trucks and pig trucks and all that. <laughs> I would want to be. I mean, they've already got one, but I would I would have liked to have been the eighteen wheeler. Of course, oh, wow. Rats Ratzenberger got that, but um, <laughs> I, that's what I'd like to be. I'd like to be an eighteen wheeler. I love it. Um, you know, Larry, Dan, thank you so much for your time. You know, we had a blast with this series. I think everyone's going to love it when it comes out. And uh, we just want to say thank you again for your time. You know, you, you're such a lovely person and we can't wait to see what you get to work on next. Oh, man, I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoy it, man. We were, yeah. we were having fun when we did it. So I'm glad to see the reactions to it. Oh, yeah. It shines through out. So thank you so much. Thank you. You got it. You got it. Get it up. <laughs> I yeah. got to do that, right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. It's amazing to see all of your faces. Uh, my name is Daniel. And I'm Anthony. Thank you so much for your time today. Excellent. Nice, to, see you. nice to meet you. Thank you. Oh, of course. You know, we, we've been really lucky this year to talk to some of your incredible colleagues at Pixar, you know, for turning red and for light year. Uh, so we're truly honored to be with all of you today. So thank you again for your time. You're welcome. This is great. Likewise. <laughs> you know, it makes a lot of sense to take these cars on the road. Um, obviously, you know, we're going on a road trip. Uh, Steve, for yourself, you know, how did the idea for the show come about? Yeah, we had tried out some different ideas and the one that landed felt like a natural. It was like, uh, take the characters from one place to another and break it up in a way where they can be in a new adventure every place they stop. Right. And that gave us the opportunity to tell a new little epic saga every time these guys took a, took a stop on the side of the road. And uh, that was the idea that kind of lit us all up and the one we wanted to see through. I love that. And, and I think it works so well in these, you know, in these more bite-sized episodes. Because just like you said, like every single episode, we're, you know, we don't have to really worry about how they got there. We just know that, hey, this, you know, we're going to a haunted a mansion today or we're going to a movie set today. And I, and I thought that was just, it was such a great way to, to tell the story and have that like just connective tissue like throughout everything. Now, a question for all of you. Did you have a favorite road trip or memory with your family or place you visited growing up? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was a little boy, when I was eight years old, we moved from Ohio to San Francisco. And so we were in two cars and a caravan and just traveling across the country and all the strange places that me as a little kid wanted to stop and wished I could stop and didn't get to stop at all the time because my dad was determined to push on through. <laughs> but... You know, those places were really strong memories. And one of them was the uh, Dinosaur National Monument in Utah, where, you know, they had the big cement dinosaurs out front. And that totally infused itself in my brain, you know, to to be realized in the show all these years later. That's awesome. Brian, uh, Mark, uh, Bobby, how about for yourselves? Well, I was getting my, the most memorable road trip was also probably like had the, the worst things happen to us. <laughs> Don't they all, right? That's probably why we remember it. Like we, you know, we were going with my mom to the Grand Tetons and it was going to be like this glorious trip to the most beautiful mountains. And our, our car broke down about a hundred miles outside of Winnemucca, Nevada in the middle of the desert. And we got stranded in Winnemucca for, um, you know, a week and took greyhounds and, and rental cars and, but it's still the trip that we all talk about because, um, you know, we had all the moments together of, of kind of weird places and weird, bond, you know, bonding and in the middle of the desert and glorious Winnemucca, Nevada. No offense, Winnemucca. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, one, no one got inducted to any secret orders while they yeah. were uh, on the road. Nothing like that happened. It was, it was you know, close. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, tried. I, was on this, I took this trip uh, right after I was a senior in high school back from um, California to Minnesota and back in like 10 days. And I remember at one point we were in, I don't know, it's either North Dakota or Wyoming, but it was somewhere where the, the road was just straight and it was flat. And <laughs> uh, like a hundred miles, like nothing changed. And, um, and I was like, this is 
like, I, this is not California. This is something. And um, uh, I remember at the beginning, um, you know, of episode five when we're at the circus and they're out there in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, this is what I want to feel like. I want to be like a straight line for the first shot. I want to be like a line on the side. I'm like, I want you to get the feeling and the sentiment and the queen to have the same sentiment of like, nothing out here. And then just, <laughs> just as a great jumping off point for the juxtaposition of Ivy's character and what she sees, you know, she literally sees it herself in the clouds, right. uh, you know, uh, but I, but I remember thinking about that specifically and describing that to the artists as they were building these shots. I'm like, no, no, just, just a line. That's it. Straight as can be. And Brian, you're up now. Uh, I did drive across the country when I moved from Kentucky to California. And I, one of the fondest things I remember, besides, besides the idea that when you're in a car for hours and hours and hours, there's no greater feeling than stopping at a gas station. That oh, is yeah. most glorious to get a beef jerky and a Coke. <laughs> that, it, that, it's never been so glorious. It's, it's right. amazing how excited you can be when you're stopping at a gas station. Uh, under those circumstances. But what I think I just loved the most was every day, you know, one day it's cornfields, nothing but cornfields, like Bobby's talking about. The next day it's desert. The next day it's pine trees in the, in the mountains of California. And it's just going through all these biomes, you know, every day changing, you know, it's something I had never done in my right. life. I don't, I've seen one in one place. And so the, just the fact that, I mean, that's what, part of the attraction, you know, for the series is, and we, we did try to work, make sure that in every episode, it's a feels like a different part of the country. Yeah. And, you know, and hopefully if uh, we get to see season two of the show, we'll get to see the ride back. If they, they take that uh, scenic route home, right? We would love, we would love to show you that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bobby, the theme song for this show is very catchy and it's been stuck in our heads all week. It reminds me of my childhood. How did it come about? Yes, that's the goal. I mean, <laughs> honestly, so I, I loved Saturday morning cartoons. I loved cartoon shows in the morning. I watched a lot of TV cartoons growing up, a lot of TV. We couldn't afford to go to movies much. So I grew up on like TV cartoons and I can still sing those theme songs, you know, whether it's GI Joe or Transformers or, you know, Gummy Bears or whatever it is. I can sing this. Yeah. Yeah, I can't right now. And um, when we were, we were talking, I was talking with Steve and Brian and I was like, let's, let's do a theme song. And I wanted something, I, I did a lot of research about like kind of the modern theme songs and something short and compact, but, but would just kind of like get, get stuck. And um, that, was, that was the goal. And I, you know, wrote it up and pitched it to these guys. And they're like, all right, great. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it went unchanged essentially from there. And you're our oh. test audience, and I guess it works. Yes. <laughs> also that great tradition of a show that has a theme song that says, here's what we're doing. You know, yeah, <laughs> it tells you what the show is. Yeah. yeah, very catchy. Yeah, it's the ultimate earworm for sure. It's been literally like while we were like going through our interviews today, we're just like seeing like cars on the road, like the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of a show growing up called The Littlest Hobo. Um, <laughs> that has this this it's a story about this dog who goes on these adventures, but it just it's just uh, this the theme of the song is very adventurous, which kind of kind of unlocked this memory of mine. That's cool. I love it. That's fantastic. You know, yeah. my favorite thing about this the this show is that, you know, there are so many just movie references sprinkled throughout throughout all of the show. And there's like just different animation style changes as well, too, throughout the series. So we see like, you know, references obviously to the shining into the lost world, to the Thunderdome. You know, there's so many there's there's so much love into this. And obviously we could tell that you are all such, you know, inspired by works that have come before. Were there any like movie references that didn't make the cut, or do you do all of you have a favorite one? Uh, that you got to include in the series? I feel like, uh, like I said before, I feel like we got to do all the episodes that we wanted. Like we got a good uh, arrangement, a good uh, mix of, of different sensibilities. Uh, there are a couple, I don't want to give them up in case there was one specifically that um, uh, I don't want to tell you in case we get to do it some. Sure, no um, worries. Yeah, there's a couple ideas out there that, we would have liked to see through, but uh, we're perfectly satisfied with what we got to do. Yeah, there's, we, I think, uh, you know, especially like the the Haunted Mansion episode and like The Shining, uh, obviously not the first reference to The Shining that we've seen in a, in a Pixar film, but it just always, it was just so 
cool like you like just seeing like the the antifreeze coming out of there and it's just it's just it's so well done like we, we were yeah. just like laughing throughout that whole episode it was so so cool we almost didn't do that gag because there was a question about whether we could afford to do that gag because it's you know doing liquid at any time yeah. is really challenging but our effects guys were so determined that they wanted to do it it's like okay i guess it's in because you want to do it so much so that right. was part of the kind of passion that drove a lot of these episodes Somebody wants to prove that they can do it, so let's do it. Definitely, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. Very cool. Uh, Cars was uh, such a landmark in animation when it released in 2006. How has the process of creating stories at Pixar changed since the, the first film started? Oh, so the story process has changed. I mean, right. the story process is always the tricky part. Like, once, once you know what your story is to make these, everybody is so experienced uh, and talented that you know, making them is less the challenge than kind of arriving at what you want to make. And so it feels like the process of going through reels, testing the ideas on your coworkers and, you know, audiences that haven't seen it before that it seems like it's stayed pretty similar to what it's always been. Right. Perhaps a simplified version for, for this project being streaming, we were moving a lot faster. So right. where a feature, we might uh, turn a movie around many, 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 many times, trying everything we possibly can, second guessing ourselves, but trying with trying to make it perfect. On this one, we were trying to make ourselves laugh. You know, it was a, it, as soon as we could make ourselves laugh and it made sense, we were, we locked it up. It's interesting. I was the first animator on the first cars. I actually started in the summer of 2001, believe it or not. So like 20 wow. years ago. I know, right? Old. Um, but you know, when we started that, we had no idea how these characters would move, how they would do anything. And so we, we kind of had to write this, uh, this, this textbook of, of this language of, of movement and acting from scratch. And now we've got the books at least. So now we have a new generation anime and then we're like, well, at least here's the book to start with. And that's, that's definitely different. You know, we've got a place to, to jump off from. And I, and I think even just like, you know, from a technology standpoint, right? Like to think that, you know, we're seeing a level animation on a, like for Disney plus at home, you know, the same that we would have seen, like what we see on the big screen. It's, it's an incredible just bridge between both of them that I, I think going back to 2006, like even to think that we would have been getting a, a C, like a Pixar animated, like a uh, show. It's, it's pretty incredible to see that and to see it with this caliber of animation as well. Right. Yeah, that's also a testament to this place, you know, to Pixar and to everybody who works here. Like there is there is a, a level of quality in everybody's job and everything they do that we are striving for. And that's it. We we know what it means to make Pixar quality work. We know what it means when someone sees that lamp popping across the stream and what they expect. And we want to not only meet, but exceed our audience's expectations every single time. That's our goal. I love that. Um, you know, Steve, Bobby, Brian, Mark, thank you again so much for your time. We had such a blast with the show and we really hope we get to see, uh, you know, Mater and, and, and Lightning and all of these characters again in another uh, season down the road. So thank you so much again and uh, all the best with the show release. Right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Much. Thank you, guys. Take thank you, too. Take care. And welcome back. I'm so glad that Larry gave us the get her done. Like uh, he's he's such a, like uh, he caught me by surprise of just how like I think insightful we were um, in our interview with him and our discussion with him. You know, he kind of went to a deeper place that I don't think we are expecting him to go because obviously Larry the Cable Guy is his persona. Um, but what a kind man! What a very very just kind guy to yeah, talk to. Unexpected. Like we learned a lot about Dan or Larry and and just the two identities and what they represented at the time and where he you know, looking back what he would have changed. And, you know, this is all coming from a cars show, a children's show. It's just, it's just funny, like how a lot of people open up, especially when it comes to like, just who they are and what they bring. And even yeah. learning about like, I would be more of a mater type of character than anyone else, which, you know, it's, again, it's surprising because you assume it, but again, Larry, the cable guy and and is an alter ego of Dan. So it's, it's not always true to who you are as a real person. It's just a persona. Uh, but yeah, learning about, about Larry and his life and even, um, the creators like Bobby 
you know, and whenever we talk to creators, if you mention like the theme music, they get like that's yeah. <laughs> the, the, their favorite thing to do. Like that's their favorite yeah. aspect that they want the audience to embrace. And when I mentioned how this theme, this theme song for this show was, you know, very nostalgic and unlocked a lot of memories for me. Um, he was just super stoked that yes, the theme song worked. And I, I just love that. Yeah. I think creators and music is music is always important to anything. Uh, a show, a music video, whatever. But it's just amazing how much they embrace it and how much they care for it. And they want you right. as the audience to care for it, not look past it. And that's a, right. that's nice. It's nice to, to get that excitement out of them. Yeah, and I love that you brought that up because the theme song for this show, um, and I'm glad you, you got to ask that question, and I'm glad that I got to sing the theme song for them. Just so, <laughs> um, but it was just cars on the road. But yeah, like it's like you sometimes forget when you're watching something how much work goes into it. And, you know, for a show like this, Steve Purcell is a writer and he directed a a couple of the episodes and obviously having, you know, Brian and Bobby there too. And then Mark being the producer, these are all veterans of Pixar. These are all people who've been at Pixar for such a long time. Um, And it's amazing to see that, you know, some of them even being there from like a bug's life. So from Pixar's second film and you see the progression of how technologies advance that we could have a show like cars on the road look like a Pixar film but be episodic. And I think it's, that's what makes the show so great is that it has a great setup for each episode that you don't have to worry about the in-between how we got somewhere. You could just go right to, Hey, this is a situation. This is what's going on. You could have a really fun, like eight to 10 minutes in the scenario and then kind of keep moving on. And it's a perfect setting. A road trip is perfect for cars because everything they do is a road trip. That's how they get places. But um, no, and, and that's what I was going to say leading to my first point is just that, there's so much love and care put into everything. And even though, uh, and I'm just talking generally right now, I'm not talking specifically the cars because I do like cars, but even for things that, you know, we may be more critical of, you still see the love and hard work put into it because there's no laziness when it comes to creation. And I think that's what I love so much about talking to directors, talking to the creators, talking to producers. um, And, you know, and, and, and Larry being one of the voice actors, it's that everyone puts so much of themselves into their work. And even just thinking about, you know, them, you know, their inspirations growing up, hearing about their road trips that they took with their families growing up. Like we get to learn so much about these people. And then you look at their work through the lens of how they created it. Right. Which is, I think is uh, really cool. And again, we're just so lucky to be doing what we're doing to be able to talk to the people that we're talking to, because, you know, at the end of the day, we love movies, we love shows, we love gaming and, and the stories are what matters. And I think that's what this, what, what, this show does so well is it tells great stories it has great characters um and you root for them throughout the entirety of it so please make sure you check it out on disney plus this friday september 8th uh you'll have a great time with it anthony anything you want to add about our conversation uh with everyone on the on the show sorry thursday september 8th is a is a thursday not a friday um no i just i think for me the show really unlocked a lot of memories that i totally forgot about in regards to just yeah. being on the road trip and being on a road trip and exploring the different things that uh, that you come across uh, here in Canada, we have like the giant penny when you would go up north and and things like that. So it's just it's just very nostalgic, and I think the yeah, creators really did a good job of connecting to the maybe that that memory you forgot as a kid, and even as an adult, you maybe forgot as a kid being on the road. And, you know, there's a lot of yeah. trips that people take on the road. They go to they go to uh, Disney World from where we are, from Toronto to Florida. I know so many people who have traveled from Toronto to so Florida. So many friends who did that. Yeah. Um, and they must have experienced so many different things on the road. So, you know, there's the creators of this, of this series did such a good job of like hitting those nostalgic points. Even though maybe you didn't yeah. relate to them, you did somehow connect to them in a different story or maybe you heard of it or maybe you saw it seen it before right. so really really yeah. good yeah and, and that's the thing like there's so many landmarks you know growing up for myself too and i know the same with you whenever we went somewhere we would be driving there um even if it was somewhere for us like just an hour away like 
trips when you were younger feel so much longer. So that's why like you, you, you kind of connect and be like, yeah, like you remember having like events like this and then you relate to it and, and it unlocks, like you said, Anthony, like these memories that you may not even remember having, but you're like, yes, this feels nostalgic. This feels familiar. So please, you know, make sure you check out cars on the road, September 8th, on Disney Plus. It's also Disney Plus Day, so there's lots going on in Disney Plus. Uh, Pinocchio is going to be out as well, too. Um, and a lot more shows and movies are going to be releasing. I think Thor Love and Thunder is also going to be out that day as well. So there's lots happening on the on Disney Plus. And then we're leading right into D23 and into TIFF. So there's lots happening on the movie podcast as well. So please make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, wherever you're listening to podcast feeds. Give us five stars if you like what we're doing. And please go check out all of our rings of power coverage our interviews our review um our last of us review and uh later this week we'll have our review out of barbarian pinocchio uh we'll even have our an interview with the director of barbarian so stay tuned for all of that uh and of course that was this time with the movie podcast and we'll see you next